Hello everyone, and as always, welcome to the YouTube video. In this YouTube video, I will be covering my top 10 Foundry VTT mods for Pathfinder 2nd Edition, and as promised, I was going to release this video if my previous video received more than 10 likes, and yeah, I think it definitely received more than 10. So thank you all so much for the support I've been receiving. I have been absolutely blown away by all of the amazing people I've seen in the comments. And obviously, if you're new here, Hello, my name is Name Mun, and I'm a professional game master over on Start Playing, and I specialize with introducing new players to Pathfinder 2nd Edition and D&D 5th Edition. And since we have a lot to cover, I won't be going super in-depth and going over all of the mechanics and how-to for the mods in this video, more so I'm just hopefully going to be introducing them to some of you who haven't heard about them before, and obviously showcasing some of the features that I really like about them. But without further delay, let's start off the list with number 10, the Send Item to Another Player mod. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> and yeah, I understand this mod is pretty self-explanatory, but let me explain. This mod provides a very simple, but amazingly useful tool to you as the GM and also the players. And don't get me wrong. It sounds very simple and self-explanatory and you're like, okay, how the heck can this be on your list? But don't let its simplicity fool you. I have had so many players see this feature and be like, whoa, that's so cool. I can interact with the other players i don't have to have you as the intermediary and yeah that's pretty cool honestly and if you're a gm as well it's great because it means you don't have to be the intermediary between sending items between players and obviously the players feel more immersed because they can act like they're trading with one another so it's a pretty cool system and a pretty cool mod and there's a couple of other mods that do the exact same thing that are called different things but this is the one that i've been using for a pretty long time now but i love it so i would definitely recommend checking it out but moving on to number nine on the list modifiers matter this mod is pretty cool for both the player and the GM because it highlights when a modifier saves a character or perhaps is a reason why a character failed a certain check, normally attack rolls. So with this example, you can see that Ezrin the wizard has cast shield on himself to give him a little bit of a bonus to his AC. So when the bandit tries to attack him with his short bow, you can see that he misses, obviously because of a bad roll, but also you can see here in chat that his AC is highlighted in green, indicating that he has a little bit of a modifier to it. And if you hover over it, it will indicate it's because of shield. Similarly, it works in the opposite way, so if Valeros were to attack the bandit after it became flat-footed, you can see that the modifier turns red. So overall, a pretty cool mod, and it highlights a positive or negative outcome on a roll. So for you as a player, it shows you like, hey, this is the reason why you succeeded, so good job for doing that. And as a player, you will really love this mod because it highlights when you do something right. So if you raise your shield to get some AC, and that's the reason why you didn't get hit, then you can be like, yeah. I did that, and that was the right thing to do. <laughs> and obviously, it's awesome because as a player, maybe if you're playing a support class, it highlights when you're giving buffs to your allies, and it means that, you know, it shows you that you're doing something right, and or perhaps at least you're having a positive effect on the outcome of the battle, which I personally love. But now on to number 8, the Ranged Combat mod. This module adds a ton of super useful macros and abilities to Pathfinder 2nd Edition for both reloading weapons and keeping track of ammunition, which I'm sure as maybe a GM or a player, you can heavily appreciate. So as you can see, the module won't let me fire this crossbow until I reload it. So I have to go over here and use this handy dandy macro, which reloads my weapon, automatically deducts my ammunition, and then allows me to fire. And the best part about this module is that it works with all ranged weapons, including guns, with multiple chambers. So, if you're a gunslinger with a weapon that uses multiple barrels or has a magazine, then this module is going to be your bread and butter. So, I definitely recommend, maybe if you're going to be playing like a Pathfinder 2nd Edition adventure like that takes place in Alkenstar, for example, I would heavily recommend this module because there are different macros that help you keep track of your ammunition and how many chambers you used in your attacks and so forth. And as a GM, it makes it super easy for you because you don't have to keep on asking the question, oh, okay, so that's, that's barrel number two. All right, and you have how many of those? <laughs> and as a GM, it makes it super easy for you when keeping track of ammunition and who's reloaded and who isn't, because you can just look at their character token, see the little reloaded icon, and know for a fact, like, okay, they're reloaded, they can make that attack and so forth, and the system will obviously be your fallback if need be, where obviously if a creature or a character tries to make an attack and they are reloaded, you can just know for a fact they won't be able to until they use an action, or at least the macro, to reload. And obviously, if you want to turn off this feature, you can do so, which is pretty cool. But next up, number seven, the Flat Checks mod. So with Pathfinder 2nd Edition, as I'm sure maybe you know or maybe you don't know, there is a flat check system for certain conditions or features. And sometimes being a GM and a player, 
it can be a little difficult to keep track of that stuff. And this can really bog down your session if you're having to look up all of the rules for flat checks, and especially if your players are unfamiliar with it, you have to explain it to them. And this is a fantastic mod because it takes care of all of that for you, as opposed to having to look up these rules. But obviously, don't rely on it entirely. Make sure that if you're the GM or the player, you know what conditions or features will call for a flat check, so that way when it arises, you can easily just take care of it yourself, or you know that the mod is successfully doing it the right way and not messing up, obviously, your flow of combat. So, in this example, as you can see, the assassin is completely invisible to our heroes, but Valeros knows that his enemy is somewhere in front of him, so he's going to make an attempt to hit him. But first, since the assassin is invisible and obscured, he has to make a flat check. And as you can see, when he makes the attack, it automatically rolls the flat check to determine if he succeeds or not, and that's a natural 20, which sadly doesn't mean very much on the flat check, but he now gets to roll for that damage if he wants to, but in this case, obviously, he missed. So as you just saw, this is an incredibly useful module for both the GM and the player, and it takes care of those pesky flat checks for you, and you don't have to worry about remembering those things, especially if you're like me, who always forgets when a condition applies a flat check to a character or creature. So I would definitely recommend adding it to your module repertoire. But moving on to number six, this module is another simple one, but adds a massive quality of life boost for you spellcasters. This is the Stavs mod. And maybe when I mentioned the name of this mod, you thought this. Um, okay, another magic item mod? <laughs> well, that's cool and all, but Pathfinder 2nd Edition already has tons of useful magical items in Foundry VTT, complete with hyperlinks to their spells and abilities and features that they add to your character. So what the heck can a Stavs mod add to my experience as a player? And well, good sir, the answer to that question is actually not that it adds magical items to the game, but instead just takes the magical spells that are imbued into your magical items, such as your staves or wands, and then moves them over to your spellcasting page for ease of access and a massive quality of life boost for you as a spellcaster. And if you're looking for more reasons to have this mod, here's an example. So you're a spellcaster and you have tons of staves and wands at your disposal, right, that are imbued with their own magical spells. And sometimes, since you're a spellcaster, you spend a lot of time just on your spellcasting tab on your character sheet, because that's where all of your useful tools are, right? Well, Sometimes you just plain forget that you have a wand of heal. So if your friend is dying and you're like, shoot, I don't have any more spell slots left. I can't do that. Well, you would sometimes completely forget that you have a wand stuffed into your backpack that you completely forgot about. But in this case, it shows you that spell and shows you the subcategory for what that spell is coming from being a wand of heal in this example. So this mod takes care of all of that and makes all of your spells easily accessible on one page rather than being in both your inventory and your spell casting tab. So this mod may save some of your characters' lives in the future, so I would definitely recommend getting it, especially if you're one of those players who constantly forgets on where they have their magical items and what they add to your character sheet. This mod takes care of all of that for you and neatly puts it in your spellcasting tab. But moving on to number five, and this is one that I cherish as a GM, the Drag Ruler mod. This mod makes it so that measuring distance in combat, or just in general, is super easy. All you have to do is click and drag your token and it will automatically measure the distance your character can move and it will change color depending upon how many actions it will take. Plus, a nice added bonus is that you can change the color it measures in if you don't like the presets. Also, as a note, this works for both D&D and Pathfinder, so I guess that's a little freebie, but make sure that if you're using it for Pathfinder, you download both the core version and the Pathfinder 2nd edition version because that is pretty important. But moving on to my number four mod, Target Damage. This is a wonderful mod that takes care of saving throws and damage and when to apply half damage or full damage depending upon the saving throw nearly automatically. So, in this example, you can see that Ezrin the wizard is going to move around Valeros and wants to cast the spell Burning Hands. He manages to get into position, targets his assailants, and catches both the assassins in his fiery spell. Now you can see that it puts the targeted creatures in chat for ease of access and even adds some buttons for the GM to easily roll the saving throws individually for all, or for only NPCs that the spell effect is targeting. Now you can see that when I roll for their saves, it will display their results on the original chat card with the attack, and then when Ezrin rolls to see how much damage he does, it shows you a nice little indicator letting you know how much damage each creature should take based on their save. So I would definitely recommend getting this module if you are a GM and you have tons of players in your game or maybe monsters that have tons of AoE effects or spells that require saving throws and the like because this makes taking care of all of that super easy. But next up is number three, which is Pathfinder 2nd Edition UI version three. 
with a little honorable mention tagged on at the end. So this mod overhauls the original look for Foundry to give it a more fantasy feel, and I personally love the way it looks. Plus, if you have the Combat Carousel mod installed, it adds a super cool look to that as well. And this UI mod doesn't change everything about Foundry's UI, but I don't think that's a bad thing. And I don't think it needs to change very much about the system because it changes just enough to bring a very cool RPG theme to your games. Um, but sadly, it does lack some customization features that I wish it had, and it doesn't play very nice with other UI mods from my experience. But because this module has a couple of shortcomings, that's why I want to add on an honorable mention, which is the Duraco UI mod. This module is another wonderful UI overhaul mod that changes the Foundry user interface to a sleek new design and allows for tons of customization. I personally love how you can change the theme from light to dark mode because it makes things look a little bit more sleek in my opinion. But of course, that's not the only thing you can change. You can add your avatar or character art to chat messages, center the macro bar, and my personal favorite, you can enable compact mode so your screen isn't so cluttered. And if you minimize everything on your screen, you basically have no screen clutter. Something else that I love about Duraco UI is that they give you the option to make your conditions go circular around your token rather than vertical. And in my humble opinion, this is a wonderful change that I think Pathfinder should implement into the core game because having the conditions go vertical across your token can completely obscure part of your artwork and make you look like a walking condition bar. And I don't really like that. And I think the circular version looks a lot more neat in my opinion. And of course, these UI overhaul mods do have their ups and downs, and obviously everyone has their own taste for what type of a UI they want to use, so if you use a different UI mod and you really like it, then leave a comment down below with which one you use and why you like it. But getting closer to the top with number 2, the Pathfinder 2nd Edition Animations mod. This absolutely amazing module that's meant to be downloaded alongside the already fantastic module automated animations adds a ton of preset animations to your Foundry VTT game. And if you combine it with some of the optional mods that are over on their GitHub page, you will enhance the already extremely amazing experience that this module brings to your games. Now, keep in mind that this module does require one of the JB2A animation assets modules, but what's pretty cool is they have a free version of it, so if you want a taster to see if the module is really worth it, you can use it, and then if you want to get the full access to all of their modules, you can go support them on Patreon to get access to that. But going back to the module, it adds preset animations for everything from wild shape, to spell effects, to conditions, and in general, just makes being a GM a lot easier since you don't have to spend hours toiling away on the automated animations tab just to give some of your players really cool animations for their abilities and attacks. And as a player, it makes you super excited every time you level up or get a new feature or perhaps a new item because you get to see that sweet, sweet new animation. And let me tell you, if you're a spellcaster, you're eating good with some of these animations that this module adds to your game. But without further ado, we can finally cover my number one module for Pathfinder 2nd Edition using Foundry VTT, Pathfinder 2nd Edition Workbench. This mod is utterly fantastic. It adds so much in terms of automation, reminders, quality of life additions, and so much more. Quite frankly, this mod deserves its own video with how many features it comes with but just to showcase some of them. You can turn on a reminder to remind players to target a creature before they attack, and you can even turn on a setting where NPCs always cast a roll privately. And you can even turn on a setting that will color code your feats and spells by rarity. But by far some of my favorite options this mod gives you are the automation options for conditions. For example, you can turn on these settings which automatically reduce the stun condition at the start of your turn or automatically give the wounding condition when your dying condition is removed, and my personal favorite setting, characters automatically drop their held items when they become unconscious. And those are just some of my highlights. There are so many more options that you can mess around with to truly play and customize your gaming experience for your Pathfinder sessions however you would like. This module is a absolute must-have if you're playing Pathfinder 2nd Edition on Foundry VTT. There are just way too many extremely useful features and systems that this module puts into place to overlook, so I definitely recommend using it if you aren't already doing so. But with that everybody, thank you so much for watching my top 10 Foundry VTT mods for Pathfinder 2nd Edition, and I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below with some of the mods that you enjoyed from this video, or let me know about one mod that I missed. But with that everybody, thank you again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take it easy, Bye bye